to the accepted standards of many academics and scientists. I am unintelligent. Indeed, many would say that I'm stupid, perhaps that I'm dumb, asinine, imbecilic, empty-headed, dim-witted, whatever you want to call it. Because according to a fateful 65-minute test I took at the beginning of my ninth grade year, at the young age of 15, a test that I thought would help me establish academic expectations for my future, I have a low IQ, aka a low intelligence quotient. Yeah. According to this test, I have substandard cognitive abilities, poor retention skills, and no way to redress or even grapple with my deficiencies. I was distraught by the score. <laughs> when I first saw the results, those two ugly black markings at the top of my page just pierced my eyes. Your intelligence is substandard. You're inferior. You, you're nothing. You're stupid. You'll never amount to anything. That's what they told me. That's what those two numbers told me. As silly as it might seem, it really felt like an insult, as if someone were actually insulting me. Day after day that year, I felt less than, worse than my peers. I fixated on the results so excessively that I found myself believing I was unintelligent. Of course, besides the test, I had little evidence to substantiate my conclusion. I was doing fine in and trying hard at school. I could, I could maintain meaningful conversation with people about complex social issues or the latest world news. And um, I could thoughtfully consider in what I believed and in what I didn't. And after a while, I realized that besides my IQ test, I had no grounds to believe I was unintelligent or stupid. So I wondered, well, I can do all these things intelligent people can do. So what does intelligence mean? Why am I? unintelligent. And eventually I also realized that this test, which professes to assess my abilities without knowledge of my background, my upbringing, my thought process, or most importantly, my drive, was meaningless to me. I could think critically. I was doing well in school. Why, why would I care what this test had to say? Now, according to Cyril Burt, an educational psychologist, um, intelligence, despite its complexity and ambiguity, is most simply defined as innate general cognitive ability. Linda Gottfriedson, co-director of the Delaware Johns Hopkins Study of Intelligence in Society, also refers to intelligence as some sort of um, natural ability to deal with cognitive complexity. And even David Weschler, the late educational psychologist who actually rejected the IQ test and created his own way for evaluating intelligence, considered rational thought as expressed through speaking ability and communication skills as a paramount token of verbal intelligence. But another report published in 1995 by the American Psychological Association entitled Intelligence, Knowns and Unknowns, propounds that there is no universal assent on what precisely intelligence means. As the report put it, there are about as many psychologists who study intelligence as there are definitions for it. <laughs> so this lack of consensus on what it means precisely alone renders the entire concept less credible and its worth less valuable. But still, few would deny that intelligence in this conventional sense uh, does not exist. Most people would say it still exists. What if I told you I believe that? What if I told you I believed it didn't exist? Well, <laughs> citing this uh, bell curve of IQ scores as evidence, in which my score of 83 falls into the below average category, some would call me stupid. <laughs> but think about it. We don't question, for example, that an impoverished child in Chad uh, can't read Arabic fluently or speak it properly, while a middle class child in America can do those, can read, it, can read English properly, can speak it properly, can write it persuasively. Uh, why is that? Why is it that, I mean, is it because the child in Chad is less intelligent? Or is it because of, is it because of other things? No, with, with the basic working knowledge of the Sudanese genocide that in recent years has bled into Chad, or uh, maybe the, the civil war that plagued Chad a few decades back, one can intuit why that child from Chad doesn't excel at conventional tellings of what it means to be intelligent. The child doesn't fit our mold 
of intelligence. He can't express himself as eloquently or read as easily as a child in America can. But many would argue, in my mind correctly, that the, politi the, the political climate and societal values in Chad, due to Chad's history, um, pre preclude the development of a culture that fosters education and encourages learning. So how can we determine that the innate natural ability of a child is less than another child when our means for determining that conclusion is an evaluation process that measures societal values and history rather than some innate natural cognitive ability. The problem though isn't limited to children or people in such different circumstances as a poor child in Chad and an uh, ordinary child in America. Uh, even in America the same problem exists and while the divide in America as you can see, you know, not everywhere in America is the same. is isn't as stark as the divide between America and Chad in general. And I want to be clear that I really believe the divide still exists. America is not one unified place. American society, known as the Great Melting Pot, is um, predicated on the foundation of multiculturalism. I, as a Jewish American of European descent, will likely have a sharply contrasting worldview, uh, sharply contrasting upbringing than my Native American counterpart, for example. Countless scholars agree that children's academic performance is largely a product of their socioeconomic circumstances and their personal experiences. So why do we maintain that? It's a measure of their intelligence. More empirically, let's look at this bell curve published by the aforementioned renowned psychologist Linda Gottfriedson. Gottfriedson oriented uh, a study around her hypothesis that um, there's a high correlation between job prestige and high IQ scores. Uh, she did this among both African-American and Caucasian populations. I don't want to talk about the results of her tests in the same way she does. Take a look at the bell curves here. Um, the top of the curves represent the average scores. Um, the left is our lower scores, the right are higher scores. Um, the left refers to African-American populations, the right to Caucasian populations. So uh, with just a cursory examination of this graph, one can see that according to the IQ test and according to Gottfriedson, African American people are more, are, excuse me, are less intelligent than Caucasian people. What? Isn't that racist? Weren't ideas like that used to, ideas like that of superiority, of natural superiority used to justify such terrible historical beliefs in eugenics and, and social Darwinism? Although I don't have any empirical data to prove it, I admit that, I firmly, unequivocally, and proudly reject that white people are somehow more naturally gifted or naturally more intelligent, smart than African American people. I don't believe that. Instead, I would argue for the truth of the statement that people are a product of their life's experiences. And if we accept that truism, we know that everyone is different. So why is it that even if, you know, the different experiences of all people mean that our traditional ways of uniform evaluation of intelligence, namely the IQ test, is meaningless? So back to my IQ test in ninth grade. As you may recall, I doubted my intellectual abilities for some time after the test just because of my lackluster results. Uh, regardless, I tried hard to disprove the results um, that I so passionately, really, I really did believe they were true. But after some time, I finally got it. It finally came to me. My motivation, fueled at first by the desire to prove the test wrong, um, but later by a developed love for learning, is a determinant of any academic success I've had in my life so far. Two numbers on a page could never be. If IQ test scores buoy the confidence and determination of students who attain high scores on the test, just as a high score admittedly might have done for me, then so be it. Maybe they're still wor worthwhile uh, for academia. But I'm still really not sure of any value they possess. To this day, I've achieved any success I've had because I've worked hard for the feats that denote it not because of some innate natural blessing or cognitive gift. Next year I'll be enrolling at one university or another and in preparation I've been looking into some of the required courses for freshman students. Most schools have some sort of writing requirement, maybe a math requirement, but none have what I think every school should offer. If I were a college professor, <laughs> I'd teach a class called the Making of Intelligence, required for all freshman students. Students would explore whether intelligence as a concept exists at all, and, whether if it, when, and if it does, whether it is finite or whether it expands 
by virtue of the stimuli introduced to it? Are those we brand as unintelligent, devoid of some sort of abstract natural ability, or are they devoid of a proper learning environment, or maybe just lacking motivation? Are they lacking, though, or are we, for assuming they're stupid because of the results of some scores of, on an IQ test they took was because the results were below the statistical mean? We're just going to call them stupid because the results were below the statistical mean. Students of this class would walk away not with a uh, confirmation of their innate cognitive gifts, but instead with a reaffirmed belief in the value of hard work. Now, at the time, I had no idea, but I should let you know that the IQ test I took was totally fake, uh, <laughs> even, the, even to those who believe in the merits of the test. It didn't consider my answers um, in returning a result, but instead algorithmically spewed out some random number that had nothing to do with uh, the answers I gave. I, uh, it didn't ref my result did not reflect the score I should have received. Um, but only with some research in, in preparation for giving this talk did I actually discover that. <laughs> Regar regardless, in the end, neither your nor my success um, will come from cockiness. It won't come from thinking we know all there is to know, and it certainly won't come from relying on some natural ability that we may or may not have. It will come from working for whatever it is we want. It will come from effort. You know what? I no longer have any interest in discovering my real intelligence quotient. If I had the results of a real test right here, I'd rip them up because I don't care what they are. After this presentation, the real question is whether you do. Thank you.